Since Newton, the epitome of the scientific method has been defined by the understanding of gravity. The perihelion precession of the orbit of Mercury being the benchmark study for gravity, which is the next step beyond the flat 2D two-body elliptical pair of Kepler. So specifically, we are asking for an extremely accurate model of precisely how the other planets affect Mercury's orbit. This is done by observing the extremities of the orbit. These extremities are called the perihelion and the aphelion. Together they are called the major axis and it rotates or precedes as a consequence of the other planets. But by how much? Mathematically when we introduce the third or more bodies into the equation like Venus and Earth etc. We are also compelled to move from a two-dimensional paradigm into a three-dimensional paradigm whilst at the same time taking the simple 2D ellipse and distorting it by all the other significantly massive bodies. Typically it's a nine body system with eight planets and the Sun. But what all the other studies before now have as an essential flaw is that they have simply neglected the vertical Z axis. So all other multi-planetary models have always only performed their mathematics on a flat two-dimensional plane. The best of them simply then project that data onto an ad hoc z-axis after having performed the math on the flat 2D ecliptic plane, whereas Mercury itself has a 7 degree tilt to its orbit. Only the OGS15 algorithm describes the movements of Mercury's orbit using an evolutionary force of gravity in three-dimensional space. We can pause the sim and adjust various parameters of the planets to see how they evolve temporally, after that based purely on Newtonian plan principles. Note that the Blender model is not to scale, except for the 7 degree angle, whereas OGS15 has Mercury accurate to within one tenth of a millimeter and has a temporal accuracy several decimal places more refined than NASA Horizon Ephemeris on which it is based and for which I am truly grateful. A serious problem is that Einstein has claimed his laws account for the discrepancies in Mercury's orbit. But he did this only by making adjustments to the 2D model. And the effect of including the vertical z-axis into the Newtonian process actually accounts for an adjustment much larger than that which Einstein claimed. But all the previous algorithms also have a secondary fault. They only describe the predicted average precession of Mercury's orbit not individual fluctuations. And a single variant fluctuation of one orbit is often itself twice as much as that which Einstein claimed for an entire century. Let's look at the open source solution to 3D and body gravity. We need to square the time rate variable to increase the potential force of gravity in order to make the model scalable on the dimension of time before summing any of the vectors as we do this. When we sum the vectors, we use the two quite separate loops, SS4 and SS5, so that no motion begins with an, until all the potentials have been summed. That's why I call it sum theory. And that is the solution to 3D and body gravity, which completes the essential question as to gravity beyond Newton, which is just the smallest possible quantum of time from Planck. results now 
are another matter. Perihelion precession is never a constant amount. To the contrary, often the orbit recedes when the other planets are suitably aligned. And often even that recession is more for one single orbit than that which Einstein claimed for an entire century. The solar system is not at all flat, as the other models suggest. August 15, the difference between the 3D and the 2D are as follows. The simple numbers are that Einstein claimed 43 arc seconds per century. The individual orbital fluctuations vary between negative 40 and positive 80 arc seconds for just a single orbit. So adjusting the starting orbit can easily account for Einstein's claim. And the inclusion of the z-axis itself also accounts for 63 arc seconds per century. More than the 43, which Einstein claimed. Jupiter and Saturn, however, offer some more picturesque graphs. It's impossible to describe all the detail in the video, so see the link for the full article in the description and note also the link to the source code and free algorithms. Saragashi.